Hey y'all, it's CJ from Smoky Beginnings. Ever found yourself craving delicious smoked baby back ribs, but you don't have a smoker? Well today, I've got you covered with my tried and true method for how to cook baby back ribs on a charcoal grill. I'll walk you through everything from selecting the perfect seasoning to preparing the ribs, setting up your grill, and of course, I'll be sharing tips along the way to help you smoke your ribs to perfection and steer clear of common pitfalls. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned grill master or just dipping your toes into the world of grilling. These pointers will take your rib game to the next level and have everyone begging for more. And instead of waiting five or six hours for fall off the bone smoked ribs, you can get similar results in half the time. So if you're ready to up your smoked rib game, then I'm ready. Let's go. All right, let's dive into setting up the grill for some two zone grilling. First off, we'll need to light up a full charcoal chimney. Once those coals are glowing red and covered in ash, we know that they're ready for action. Now, let's rearrange the coals for a perfect two zone fire. We want to one side to be hot and the other side to be cooler. This setup gives us the ideal balance of heat for smoking our baby back ribs. Setting up the two zone fire is straightforward. Stack the coals on one side of the grill, leaving the other side empty. Then place the lit coals on top of the unlit ones. It'll take about 15 minutes for the lit coals to ignite the unlit ones. While we wait for the grill to come up to temperature, which we're aiming for 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 degrees Celsius, it's time to prepare our ribs. But before we prepare the ribs, if you're interested in learning how to perfectly grill hamburgers and hot dogs on a charcoal grill, I've covered that entire process in detail in a previous video. Stay tuned until the end of this video where I'll share a link to that video. And hey, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Subscribing not only shows your support, but also helps the channel reach more people, allowing me to deliver great content to others. All right, let's dive into preparing these baby back ribs. Now you might be wondering about the difference between St. Louis style and baby back ribs. St. Louis style ribs come from the spare ribs, resulting in a rectangular rack with more fat and marmalade, enhancing the flavor. On the other hand, baby back ribs are smaller, leaner, and more tender. They are cut from the top of the rib cage right next to the spine, making them a favorite for those seeking a meatier, less fatty option. Now that we've clarified that, let's get these ribs ready. I'm gonna start preparing these ribs by squaring them up. And all that means is I'm gonna take off the very small bones at each end of the rib in order to square up the meat. These ribs usually either fall off during the cooking process or they burn up and nobody really wants to eat them. Um, I'm also going to remove any loose pieces of meat on this rib. We'll remove the membrane and apply a binder. Today I'm using mustard, but you can use mayonnaise, olive oil, or avocado oil. Anything with a little bit of fat and moisture to help the seasoning stick. Then it's time for the star of the show, our barbecue rub. I'm using one of my favorites, Buck's Barbecue Seasoning. This seasoning starts with a base of salt, pepper, and garlic, and then they have their proprietary blend of seasoning. I like it because the seasoning really brings out the flavor of beef, pork, and chicken without overpowering the meat. I'll leave a link in the description. Make sure to generously coat every inch of these ribs for maximum flavor. Get the front, the back, and the sides. Then allow the seasoning to penetrate by letting the ribs sit out at room temperature. Now that the grill is up to temperature, it's time to start grilling the ribs. But first, let's add some flavor with our smoking wood. Today, I'm using applewood chunks, but you can choose hickory, mesquite, or pecan wood based on your taste preferences. With the grill prepped, I'll add a water pan to the cooler side. This helps regulate the temperature and adds moisture to the air, preventing our ribs from drying out during smoking. After adding the flavoring wood, the water pan, and the grilled grape, I'll go ahead and add the ribs to the grill. I'll carefully place them bone side down 
on the cooler side of the grill. Then I'll adjust the vents to maintain the temperature as the ribs smoke away for about an hour. So it's been about 30 minutes and I know that the ribs are not even close to being done, but this is gonna be the first check-in. And what I wanna do here is to ensure even cooking is to flip the ribs. The ribs are currently bone side down. I'm gonna flip them so that the meat side is down. I'm also gonna take the one rib that is the furthest away from the heat source and move it closer while moving the rib that is the closest to the heat source away from the heat source. I'm gonna do this process every 30 minutes. For now, I'll close the lid. I will turn in about 30 minutes to rotate them again, monitoring their progress. After an hour, it's time to check the internal temperature. If after an hour, the internal temperature is creeping up to 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 73 degrees Celsius, then I know that my grill is too hot and that I'll need to adjust the vents to lower the grill temperature. The reason that I would want to lower the grill temperature is that I don't want the ribs to cook too quickly. If they do, the fat will render too rapidly, resulting in dry meat. I want the fat to render slowly and remain within the meat for a moist end result. The ribs have a nice bark. I can tell that the bark has not set yet. If there's seasoning on your finger, then the bark hasn't set and the ribs need some more time. You will know that the bark has set when I press my finger on the meat it comes off clean. It has been about an hour and 15 minutes since my bark has set and I haven't reached our first internal temperature target. I will now spritz the ribs with a 50-50 mix of water and apple juice. The spritzing liquid is going to add some moisture back to the meat. And if you like those tips, make sure to like and subscribe. After nearly two hours of grilling, our ribs are coming along nicely. With the bark well set and having spritzed them every 30 minutes until hitting an internal temperature of 165 degrees, it's time to wrap them up. I create a foil packet by laying down aluminum foil and adding the very precise amount of one handful of brown sugar, another precise amount of a smidge of honey, about three to four tablespoons of butter, and the remaining spritzing juice. Double wrapping ensures the juices stay sealed inside, keeping those ribs moist and tender throughout the cooking process. Back onto the grill they go for another hour, bringing us closer to that mouthwatering finish. Now, after about three hours of cooking, the ribs are tender. Using a meat probe, I've checked their internal temperature, link in the description, and I'm just a few degrees shy of the target range of 203 to 206 degrees Fahrenheit or 95 to 96 degrees Celsius. I probably have another 10 to 15 minutes before the ribs are done, which is a perfect amount of time to unwrap the ribs, generously glaze them with Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce, and let it caramelize on the grill. What's your favorite barbecue sauce? Let me know in the comments. Once the sauce is tacky and caramelized, it's time to remove the ribs from the grill. After about 10 to 15 minutes of resting, it is now time to see how these ribs turned out. I flip the ribs over so that the bones are facing me, then I cut the ribs individually. I've found that this is the easiest way to cut the ribs. From what I can see, we have a nice bark, a good smoke ring, and oh man, just look at that juicy goodness. Juices are oozing right out of the meat. And there you have it. That's how to cook baby back ribs on a charcoal grill. Next time, you can say no smoker, no problem. We can still get an awesome amount of smoke flavor while saving some cook time using our charcoal grill. Best of all, it's a simple process that anyone can do. Now. All that's left is to serve these delicious ribs alongside your favorite sides, like baked beans, macaroni and cheese, grilled corn on the cob, or in my case, some grilled romaine lettuce hearts, drizzled with Caesar dressing and Parmesan cheese. I hope you found these grilling tips helpful. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe 
as that is the best way to support the channel. And if you really like this video, check out the playlist suggested at the end. It's all about charcoal grilling. It features recipes for hot dogs, sausages, steaks, chicken wings, and more. For more great recipes, visit my website, smokybeginnings.com. And until next time, keep those fires burning and those taste buds tingling. Have a good one.